Um, good morning, everybody. Um, I'd like to talk about five stories about um, emerging technology. And to do this right, we, we've got to just have a quick training session. So I'm going to introduce you to a concept called a thumb vote, and it goes like this. Um, I'll make a statement or I'll ask a question, and if you think you want to answer in the positive, you put your thumb up like this, okay? If you want to answer in the negative, you can, or you think what I said is absolutely hopeless and I should leave the room, you can put your thumb down and, 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 I'll, and I'll, I'll exit, it'll be okay. Um, but you can also put your thumb kind of anywhere in between to indicate, you know, yes or, or no. So let, let's try it together. Um, I'm going to ask a question. Do people understand how the thumb voting system works? Ah, oh, fantastic. That's good. Uh, unless everybody didn't understand it, in which case you're all doing it wrong. Um, so we're going to do five stories. Um, and the first story is about algorithmic identification and intervention in mental illness. So in 2014, uh, RMIT and Monash Universities in Australia collaborated on a study that looked at how social media posting um, could um, sort of how, how it differed uh, if you had um, an affective order like bipolar disorder versus people who posted who didn't have that condition. So the intent was to understand if an algorithm um, could look at posting behavior and from that determine if somebody was in a manic state. And uh, they looked at certain types of information based on learning algorithm, on a learning model that they had. Um, they were looking at things like what time were people posting, how frequently were people posting, what types of words were they using. So um, people would then volunteer to be part of the study. And if they volunteered, this algorithm would be running in the background if it saw signs that a person was entering into a manic state it would alert them, and then based on a pre-agreed set of rules, it would also alert somebody that um, they trusted, for example, a clinician or a family member. And this study ran for a while, and it was reasonably effective. So we're going to have our first thumb vote now. Um, uh, th this is kind of an example of what it might look like, right? So it does some analysis. It says, aha, uh -huh, jazz fan is posting quite a lot. Uh, they're using certain types of words. So we'll tweet at them, hi jazzfan94, we've noticed that some of your tweets fit the pattern of someone having a manic episode. Have a look at this link, maybe reach out to your family or doctor, and we'll let that person you trust know. Okay, thumb vote number one. Is this okay? Can we have thumbs up? And just take a look around, you notice there's a real mix of thumbs. A lot of them are kind of on the level playing, on, on, the, uh, on the level. So, we're going to go to story number two. And this is a story about algorithmic targeting of adverts to people with a mental health condition. So, we're going to actually get a little bit darker here, maybe, but right now, um, there is a data broker in Connecticut, in the US, who, as part of their service, offers detailed information about people who they have data mined, um, who um, are likely to have some sort of mental health condition. And they all sell this to marketers. And then marketers will know what to do with it because there have been some really interesting studies about um, the, the behaviors and responses of people in certain effective states online. For example, people who have bipolar are more likely when in a manic state to make impulsive purchases or to engage in online gambling. So, um, once again, imagine that um, that information has been bought. Um, a person has been targeted, and they've been targeted, say, with quite a compelling advert around um, online gambling. Is this okay? I can't tell you how pleased I am to see <laughs> the direction of almost all of the thumbs. Um, maybe, maybe even all, maybe even all of the thumbs. We're going to have a third story now, and this starts to get a little bit more interesting because it's basically the same thing. An algorithm is targeting people with ads, um, they've used a learning model, um, they've decided that some people, this type of advert is going to be more effective than others, but they never really asked why. They may be, in fact, in this story, they are targeting people who are in vulnerable, effective states, but they don't know it. All they know is that for some reason, people with these particular posting behaviors tend to respond better to this advert than people without them. What do we think? Is this okay? 
okay? And make sure you look around and see where people's heads are at. Um, story number four. Government scanning social media posts as a public health tool. And this is not science fiction by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so, um, Canadian government recently released a tender saying, we do not want to know the individual um, details of a person um, whose posting behavior might lead us to think that, for example, they are at risk of self-harm. But we would really like to know in aggregate what postcodes does this happen in, what types of, um, of um, characteristics or demographics or psychographics uh, might we think about. Um, because if we have that, then we can start to use that information to design better policy, or we can use that information to better target programs. We're not going to target individuals, but at an aggregate level, we're going to be a better government because we know the types of things that we're looking for. So once again, that story, is this okay? Okay, and we're back to sort of a mix. Last story. Uh, Governments using social media post analysis to subtly tailor websites to suggest mental health assessment. And just for the purposes of disclosure, I've completely fabricated this australia.gov.au website, um, but let's imagine in our story that this is what's happening. Um, so government um, looks at your posting history, harvests data about you, deposits that in some sort of cookie or in some sort of state-based state or, you know, um, state-based way on your computer. And next time you visit a government website, it just makes some subtle changes. Maybe it raises the prominence of information about health and mental health. Maybe it puts an ad um, which gives you the ability to more easily reach out to a mental health service or get some sort of mental health assessment. Nothing coercive, but definitely the site is responding to what it knows. So, final thumb vote. Is this okay? And again, a bit of a mix. So, we're in um, what I like to call um, an age of digital abrasion. And it's a very interesting time that we're in because there is a tension right now between what technology allows us to do, as, as we would all very well know in this room, um, and what the community feels that it's acceptable to do. And that tension can be quite significant. Um, there's a lot of temptation to do things because technology is quite seductive and it allows us to go to places that maybe the community isn't particularly comfortable with. Maybe because it's new, maybe because it's genuinely harmful, but that tension exists and many of us in this room would be dealing with that um, almost every day. And those stories that I talked about, um, all of them are either factual or rooted in things that are happening. And it places a big burden on us as designers because um, there is sometimes no clear answer to whether something is okay or not. I think when I said, um, how about adverts targeting um, people in vulnerable states, I think every single thumb was down. 